It felt kind of like a wet gumdrop. Angel sucked in the air. Could this have something to do with that stupid gumdrop nose? <laughs> yes. Uh, she closed her eyes and ground her teeth together. This was all Ophelia's fault. If she hadn't had her stupid party and gotten that stupid nose, Angel could have had an allergic reaction to the nose. What was in it? Wait, allergic reaction? Whatever it was, the gumdrop nose or not that caused it, Angel could have been having an allergic reaction. That was easy enough to fix, right? Angel turned and crossed the bathroom to the wall cabinet next to the door. This was where her mother kept over the counter medicines that she didn't want Ophelia getting into. Surely they had some antihistamines, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I know what that word is, I'm just, I don't think I've ever seen it like written down, it's weird. Angel opened the cabinet door and sorted frantically through the boxes, bottles and vials. Yes! Angel spotted a box of antihistamines, and she didn't even bother to read the dosage instructions. She took three of them. Then she sat on the toilet seat and waited. She didn't know how long to wait. How long did it take for these things to start working? She sang softly while she waited. She sang three full songs. Her eyelids started to feel heavy. Didn't antihistamines make you feel drowsy? If so, that meant the pills were working. Excited, Angel stood to look in the mirror again. She again had to cover her mouth so she wouldn't scream. Her eyelids weren't heavy because she was drowsy. Her eyelids were heavy because they were now covered with the sticky scales. So was most of her forehead and the rest of her arms. Making sure her towel was securely tucked around her, Angel grabbed her discarded clothes, slapped off the, bo the bathroom light, threw open the bathroom door and ran down the hall toward her room as quietly as she could. She couldn't handle this on her own. She needed to get to a hospital. She had to get dressed and she didn't want to put on the clothes she just took off. They could be infected. She probably wouldn't even have, uh, she probably shouldn't even have been carrying them, but it was too late now. As she passed her mum in Myron's room, she hesitated. She wondered if she would, if she should wake them. No, no way. What was wrong with her? Were the gloopy scales spreading to her brain too? If she'd had normal parents, loving parents of course, she'd go to them to help. But she had her useless mother and she had Myron. She had the two people most responsible for everything wrong in her life. They were the jerks who wouldn't help with her college because they were too busy spoiling her brat of a stepsister. No way was she going to ask them for help. In effect, she had no family. She was alone. Angel slipped into her room and leaned back against the door. Should she call one of her friends? She didn't have what she'd call a BFF, but she hung out with a lot of kids in the drama department. One of them might help her. As soon as she had the idea, she dismissed it. She didn't want those people to see her like this. They might help, but they'd also see her situation as an opportunity. Looking like this, she wasn't going to be able to perform the final spring performances. No, her friends would be more likely to gloat over her predicament than help her with it. And what about her teachers? No, same thing. They were supportive, but their support had a lot to do with their looks. She couldn't let them see her like this. She saw herself in the ER all by herself, all, uh, all by herself, but surrounded by dozens of strangers. ERs were busy places. Did she really want to be seen like this in a crowded place? Absolutely not. No, the ER wasn't the place for her. She shouldn't go to hospital. If anyone, if something from Freddy's was causing this, there's only one thing to do. Dropping a pile of clothes, Angel carefully poked in the pockets until she found Dominic's card. Here she'd thought he was a great guy. She should have known better. Why did she think someone who worked at that nasty pizzeria could be a good guy? Dominic wasn't good. He worked for the awful place that made her sick. Well, now he was going to have to set her helper. She'd make him help her, and he was going to get a piece of her mind too. What kind of crud was in Freddy's anyway? Were the food and the candy poisoned? Was the water full of toxins? Germs? Did she pick up a virus there? Angel ran to the hallway side table and grabbed the phone. Please be there, she breathed as she dialed Freddy's number. He did say he could always call her, but she also wasn't sure what time the arcade closed. It was really late. Dominic answered on the third ring. Freddy Fazbear's Pete, he began. What did you do to me? Angel snapped before he could finish. Angel, is that you? Yes, it's me. Or at least it is for now, but I don't know how much longer I'm going to be me. I'm sorry, can you slow down? I think I might be missing something. You're not making sense. What do you have in that horrible place? She wanted to shout, but she didn't want any anyone to wake up. 
So she asked a question in quiet, clipped tones. Can we back up? I feel like I've got a train in the middle of its run. I don't know where it started and I don't know where it's going. Stop trying to be clever. I'm not being clever. In fact, I think I'm being pretty dense. I really don't know what you're talking about. Can you please start at the beginning? I should have known you weren't any different than other guys. Sure, you seem different, but you were just playing games, weren't you? What did you do to me? Dominic sighed. <sighs> Angel, please tell me what's going on. I'm turning into a slimy, squishy, disgusting lizard, is what's going on. I have these putrid scales spreading all over me. Angel thought she heard Dominic groan, but she didn't stop talking. That's what's going on, and it has to have something to do with being at Freddy's today. It could have been whatever you had in that plastic bottle, maybe, or something in the food or candy, or you tell me, something at Freddy's did this. Dominic was silent. He was still on the line. Angel could hear him breathing. Dominic? Dominic still didn't speak. Are you there? Angel asked. Another few seconds passed. I'm so sorry, Angel, he finally said. So you know what's wrong with me? You need to come to Freddy's, he said. You didn't answer me. Come to Freddy's and I'll explain. His voice, already so smooth and deep, dropped even lower. It soothed her. She could feel her heart rate slow just a little. And I'll help you, Angel. Just get to Freddy's. Angel's fury at Dominic and the stupid pizzeria abated enough for her to feel the spark of hope. You'll help me? Her voice sounded small, but she didn't care. Yes, I'll help you. Just come here to Freddy's. Okay. And Angel? Yeah. Hurry. Okay. Bye. Angel hesitated for just an instant, then said bye. Angel sat on the floor for several seconds, clutching the phone and listening to the dead air at the end of the call. Dominic would help her, and maybe he hadn't betrayed her after all. Maybe everything would be okay. Angel suddenly realised how much time she was wasting. She dropped the phone, jumped up, and rang back to her room. Angel yanked open bureau drawers and pulled out fresh underwear, a bra, jeans, and a t-shirt. She, why, why is that detail that we need? Uh, she threw on her clothes as fast as, we, as she could, and she thrusted her feet into her sandals. Okay, now that was the easy part. Now she just had to get to Freddy's. She couldn't walk, it was too far. Not to mention, she didn't want to be seen. She looked at the digital clock on her nightstand. It was 1.35am. <laughs> no, it was 11.35pm. It was Dark, but it wasn't late enough for the street to be totally deserted. She thought about biking, but even that would take her a long time. No, the dreadful jelly scales were spreading too fast. She needed to drive. She'd take her mother's sports car. She'd driven the car plenty of times. Sometimes when Myron wasn't around, her mum would tell Angel she wanted to go on a drive and she felt like being chauffeured. <laughs> take, a, take one of the horses. <laughs> Angel loved driving the zippy car. She wished it was hers. So driving the car wasn't an issue, but getting it away from the house might be. Could she deactivate the alarm, get into the garage, open the garage door, start the car and leave without anyone waking up? She had to. She had to get this handled or her life was going to be totally ruined. Angel grabbed one of her scarves and wrapped it around her head so it would obscure her face as much as possible. She tucked her hair behind her ears. Suddenly, Angel thought of the way Dominic had tucked her hair behind her ear. Her eyes filled with tears. It figured. Story of her life. I meet an amazing guy and I start turning into a clammy reptile, she thought. <laughs> I mean, moodier. Yeah. Uh, would Dominic still like her when he saw the way she looked now? Was he as one-dimensional as all the other guys she'd met? The ones whose interests only went skin deep? If he was, that was the end of it. Even if he wasn't, how could they go out with her looking like this? How long would it take for this to go away? Would it be gone by graduation? By the time she left for the summer workshop? Why couldn't things go Angel's way for a change? It really wasn't fair. By the time Angel got into her mother's bright yellow sports car, the squidgy reptile skin had co completely covered Angel's arms. She assumed it was heading down her legs too, because they felt funny. Her stomach felt strange as well, kind of heavy. She noticed that when she sat down in the driver's seat of the car, she was shorter in the seat than she'd ever been before. She had to adjust the rear view mirror downward, and she usually had to adjust it upward because she was a little taller than her mum. When she noticed this, she lifted her shirt to see what was happening. She let out a little scream. Her stomach had gotten so elastic that it was kind of collapsing in on itself when she sat down. Was she going to be able to get to Freddy's before she was uh, too pliable to do anything at all? Angel backed down her driveway and pressed the button to close the garage door. Her neighbourhood was an expanse of darkness broken up by outdoor porch lights. In the distance, a dog barked. 
but otherwise the only sound was the car's engine. None of the houses near hers had lights in the windows. It didn't look like anyone was staying up late to see Angel taking her mother's car out for a spin. Good. Angel pointed the car in the direction of Freddy's and she resisted the urge to stomp on the accelerator. Speeding through town wasn't the thing to do right now, so she drove. Well, like an angel. Careful to obey every traffic law so as to not draw any attention to herself. Being in the highly visible, expensive car made being unobtrusive a little challenging even under normal circumstances and these, these weren't normal circumstances. Most of the trip was quiet and uneventful, but a block from Freddy's she had a scare. What? <laughs> Waiting at a red light, she heard the grumble of some kind of muscle car come up next to the sports car. She didn't look over, but the driver of the car whistled and called out, Wanna have some fun, honey? Angel clutched the steering wheel harder, or she tried to. When she couldn't get the grip she wanted, she looked down to see why. Oh no. Her fingers were turning into segmented chunks of muscus-like material that turned her stomach. They didn't even look human anymore. The driver in the car next to hers called out again and she glanced at the driver's door to be sure the locks were engaged. She also lowered her hands to the bottom of the steering wheel so the driver wouldn't see them in the relentless intrusion of the streetlights. The guy in the muscle car kept up a rude, suggestive patter while the light stayed red. What was taking so long for it to change? Eventually, it turned green. The muscle car sped off. Angel let out her pent-up breath. She drove the rest of the way to Freddy's without encountering another vehicle. That was weird. <laughs> what, what happened there? Uh, okay. When Angel finally pulled her mum's little sports car into the parking spot closest to the front door of Freddy's, she looked around at the brightly lit lot. Thankfully, no other cars were in it. She was alone. Now scanning the area again, she opened the driver's door and headed toward Freddy's entrance. Before she got there, Dominic opened the door and looked out to her. Angel's steps faltered. Even though she needed Dominic's help, she didn't want him to see her this way. She looked down and let her hair fall forward over her face. Angel? Dominic called out. It's okay, don't worry about how you look. I don't care about that. I just need you to hurry so I can help you. Angel glanced at Dominic through the veil of her hair. His expression was somber. Her lips were pressed together and his eyes looked red. Had he been crying? Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, <laughs> sweet, quite literally. Um, he really seemed to care. This made Angel trust him even more. She walked forward and put her malformed heart hand in this strong, perfect one. Without any comment about her hand or any of the rest of her, he led her into Freddy's. Come on, I'll take you to the back. Angel let Dominic pull down, her pull her down the hall. She looked up. The place looked much different now than it had hours ago. Not just because it was empty and quiet, but because... Because why? Angel frowned. Was it the lighting? Oh no, it's her eyes, isn't it? During the party, every light in the restaurant had been on. Now most of them are out, and the ones that, are, that were turned down to a dim setting. Uh, every bright colour in the place was muted. Shadows stretched down the hall ahead of her and created pockets of darkness along the walls and the ceiling. The effect was sobering, maybe even a little scary. Taking a few tentative steps down the hall with Dominic, Angel could see the pictures of the characters on the walls, but they looked less friendly now. Why was that? Was it the shadows or something else? Angel took a few more steps until she heard a weird clinking sound. Suddenly, scared for no good reason, she stopped. It's okay, Dominic said. It's just one of the animatronics doing daily maintenance. Angel nodded and began hobbling forward again. She was feeling woozy. The edges of her vision started to get fuzzy and her balance wavered or wavered. <laughs> uh, wavered, I think. Was the restaurant getting darker? No, it was the same. The problem was her. She was starting to lose consciousness. Dominic, I'm having trouble seeing. Dominic put his arm around her and started moving her more quickly along the hall. He said something to her, but she didn't understand it. Something was wrong, wrong with her hearing now too. It felt like she had cotton in her ears and she was sinking toward the floor. Her legs were going limp. They wouldn't hold her up anymore. Dominic, help me. Dominic lifted her into his arms, and he began trotting down the hall. Suddenly, the lights were brighter. Not by a lot, but a little. They didn't seem to reveal any of the surroundings, though. Angel's diminished ver uh, vision was worsening even more. The walls and floors going past her were taking on an amorphous, an amorphous sorry, quality. They were losing their edges and becoming indistinct, almost impressionistic. 
Angel tried to blink and bring a hand up close to uh, bring her hand up to wipe her eyes, but her arms just swung loose at her sides. She couldn't get them to respond to her brain's commands. But really, where were her brain's commands? Her brain was meandering around as if her brain cells had turned into soft rubber. No, not rubber. She sensed they were turning into goo, like that goopy clay stuff Ophelia liked to play with, smooshing it between her little fingers like melting cheese oozing out of a grilled cheese sandwich. Faz goo! No, I'm joking. Um, okay, Angel, we're here. I'm going to put you into something that's going to help you. Do you understand? Angel nodded because she could suddenly hear again. Why? Maybe it was the relief. She was getting the help she needed. Dominic knew what she was going go What? Dominic knew what was going on. He said he'd explain it. He hadn't explained, and she wanted him to, but mostly she just wanted him to make it stop. Maybe Dominic has an antelope. What? <laughs> oh, no, that, that isn't right. Antidote. That's what it is. <laughs> I love that. Maybe Dominic has an antelope. She tried to talk again, but she couldn't. She could see again, though. Like her hearing, her eyesight had miraculously cleared up. She blinked, and she could clearly see that Dominic was getting ready to lower her into a box. It was such a pretty box, a shiny wooden box. Its grain so swirly and lovely that Angel wanted to become part of the box. She wanted the box to embrace her, hold her, and keep her safe. That's so sinister. Uh, as soon as she saw the box, Angel no longer cared about what was happening to her. She didn't care about why it was happening either. She didn't need an explanation. She was where she was supposed to be. Dominic bent over and began to put Angel in the box, and she tried to speak again. She wanted to say thank you. All she could get out was, th you. I know, I know, Dominic said. It's going to be okay. His voice sounded odd, broken, like he was crying. Angel felt moisture on her forehead when Dominic leaned over her, tears. She wanted to tell him it was okay. She was in the box now. It was her box. It belonged to her, and she belonged to it. Angel felt something prying at her eyes and her mouth. She felt hands prodding the skin on her arms. I, I have a feeling, I have a feeling I know what's happening. I think I know what's happening. And if I am right with what is happening, this is so creepy. <laughs> this is so sinister. Um, it's okay, Angel, Dominic repeated. It'll be a few hours at most. A few hours until what? Angel hoped it was a few hours until she was all well. Wouldn't that be great? She had something she wanted to do. What was it? I'm here, Angel, Dominic said. You're not alone. Dominic, that's what she wanted to do. <laughs> she wanted to do Dominic. Uh, she wanted to go out with Dominic. If she was better in a few hours, she'd be able to go. Where were they going to go? Do you feel anything? Dominic asked. Angel wanted to answer that question. Yes, she felt things. She felt a hard surface beneath her body. She felt something cool under her head. She felt the warmth of the bright light shining down on her. She felt hands on her forehead. Close your eyes, Angel, Dominic said. Angel did what he told her to do. The light went away. The world went dark. She could still hear, but sounds were distorted, like she was floating in water. Her ears were just below the surface. Uh, there you go, Dominic said. It will be over soon. Good, Angel thought, and she let unconsciousness take her. Angel woke up abruptly, as if someone poked her or shouted at her. She was fully alert. That was good, wasn't it? She had a vague memory of being really out of it before she went to sleep. The rash had done something to her thinking. The rash? Did she still have it? Angel tried to sit up. She couldn't. She couldn't move at all. What was going on? She tried again. It felt like she was paralysed. Not liking that feeling at all, Angel arrived and hit her forehead on something hard. She squirmed some more and her elbows and knees whacked something hard. Not paralysed. Confined. In what? For several moments, Angel fought to get free out of the box she was in. She lamented Ophelia's party, which, was, which she understood vaguely was responsible for where she was now. But then she stopped struggling. Angel told herself to stay calm, take stock, then figure out what to do next. She scanned her body. It felt foreign, not familiar at all, but she could sense that she seemed to be in an upright position. She was standing... If she was, she was standing in some kind of box that was so tightly fit around her that she had no leeway to move. Angel was breathing, quickened. She didn't like confined spaces. She opened her mouth to call out, but her mouth was covered with something. Tape? She couldn't get her lips to part. She couldn't feel her teeth either, and she was having a little trouble breathing. Her nose felt funny, like it was partially plugged with something. Angel was on the verge of panic when suddenly she felt space open beneath her feet. 
Then she felt the sensation of being lowered, down, down, down. From what seemed like a great distance, she could hear the sound of children screaming. She recoiled. She hated the sound of children screaming. That sound always reminded her of her bothersome step stepsister, Ophelia. Over the sound of the screaming, Angel heard a musical fanfare and a booming announcer's voice. I knew this was... I knew... Th I knew exactly where this was going from, like, the beginning. She couldn't make out all of his words, but it sounded like he was uh, talking about someone's birthday and she heard Grand Finale. Why did those words seem familiar? The children's screams turned into cheers and laughter and Angel's eyes were suddenly assaulted by bright, bright lights and lots of dazzling colours. She tried to figure out where she was because she had the sense that she had been here before recently, but all she could see was light and colour. The sensation of being lowered stopped, and now Angel could feel that she was hanging in midair. She felt her body swaying back and forth, back and forth. It was not a pleasant sensation, so she tried to control the motion by twisting herself this way and that. She also flailed her arms, and she was pleasantly surprised that she could. She was hanging, but at least she was no longer confined. She, stick she, kicked, her legs she kicked out her legs and she flexed her hands and feet. I, lo I love how now she genuinely is a piñata. <laughs> Her announcer was saying something else. Angel caught the word yummy, but she couldn't work out the rest of what was being said. The children's clamour was getting louder, though. It felt like they were getting closer, too. Angel felt like she was being surrounded. She moved her body around some more, doing a sort of mid-air dance. She wondered if she could do a somersault. She tried. No. Something was attached to the top of her head. The announcer spoke again. His words were all run together, all mushy, until he got to his last three words. Angel heard those clearly. Ready, set, go. Julie smiled up at the announcer when he said, ready, set, go. She took a step forward. Uh, she took a step toward the gummy girl oscillating from the ceiling. She so liked being the centre of attention that she wanted to stretch out the moment. She turned to look out at her parents. They beamed at her. She waved to them. Happy birthday, Julie, her mum called out. Yay, birthday girl, her dad shouted. Julie grinned, and she leaned over to the gummy girl dangling in front of her. She reached up a hand, grabbed the foot, and bit off the gummy's big toe. Everyone, join in, the announcer sang out. The other kids crowded around Julie, and they began eating up the swaying, squirming gummy candy that was unlike any other. Oh! I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. Now, yeah, the thing is, I I did predict that would happen. Um, I I was sure that that was where the story was going. Right when we f were first introduced to the Gummy Angel, I I even think, I even think I said that at one point uh, at the beginning, in like the yeah, in the first like half an hour or something. Anyway, uh, that was a very good story. That was surprisingly good. Um, it was, again, it was very slow at the beginning, but everything seems to make sense. There was that one guy in the car which made no sense. I don't know why he was mentioned, but um, I guess it's just to make the book seem longer. Uh, um, but that was so good. That like that was very. Um, it's it's a very creepy ending, spine chilling when you know what what's going on, and oh my god, I feel for. Um, What's his name? Dominic. I feel for Dom Dominic so much. He was crying because he knew exactly what was going on. And it, it, it makes you think a lot, really. Like, surely that nose, when they eat the nose, then the person who ate the nose becomes the, uh, the gumdrop uh, girl or, or whatever. Uh, and so that's how they keep getting... Um, they keep getting like the gumdrop girl at at Freddy's they they use this thing uh, and then when when Dominic heard what was happening it's so creepy because he knows what's going on he he has inside information in in, in what goes on at Freddy Fazbear's pizza and like he knew that there was nothing that could happen that there's nothing that could help her except for her to literally just be in a box and then yeah stuff <laughs> stuff like that um I don't know, yeah, I, I think that's basically it. That was a very good story, uh, easy to understand as well. Um, there's, I, I don't think, I don't feel like there's a lot of, um, like, agony and stuff going on here. It's just showing us, like, the, the creepy side of Freddy Fazbear's pizza, you know? 
everything is horrid. <laughs> everything. Everything is messed up. Uh, but very good story. I actually really enjoyed that. So um, if you guys want to see like a tier list of all of the stories I've read so far, um, then I would really enjoy doing that as a video. Um, so tell me in the comments if you like that. Also like this video if you enjoyed this audiobook. Uh, with the next story we are going to be doing uh, is, oops, that's part of the story, Sergio's Lucky Day. So that, that is the next story. Uh, we will be doing that very, very soon. But for now, thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Goodbye.